In Moldova's second largest city Balti is the Psychoneurological Boarding School, Internatului. Psychoneurologic the establishment used to accommodate those in need of care due to mental illness. Opened its doors in August 1984 with the owner being a man named Stanislav Floria born in either 19,521,953. Little appears to be known about Stanislav aside from court documents mentioning him being married. And a father. He was also stated to be well respected amongst the local community. Internatului Sihoneurologic. Behind closed doors. The institution was a dreadful self to find oneself in as the staff were prejudiced against those with disabilities and worst of all the owner Stanislav was a man who would repeatedly rape the female patients with his staff well aware of these actions. Most complaints made to the police and prosecutors over this issue went unheeded with the staff. Either not believing them or worse demanding that they retract their claim lest they be imprisoned. In Block 2. Block 2 is a special wing of the facility and the staff claimed that it is used for the patients. And others safety and patients only got sent there if there was a sudden outburst from patients. Afflicted with mental illness such as bipolar or schizophrenia and others presenting a danger to themselves or others. Those who had the misfortune of being sent there claimed that it was utilized as a punitive measure. With patients forcibly confined in solitary-like conditions for reporting the staff or Stanislav. Those sent to Block 2 were only released when Stanislav or the staff decided to let him out. Stanislav would prey on the female patients and employ various techniques to force himself on them. An exact timeline as to every incident is available and outlined in court documents but the particular details of every assault aren't known and we only know the particulars of those who have come forward and publicly spoken out. Stanislav would call patients into his office for an appointment where he would either threaten and strong arm the women threatening to send them to block two if they didn't comply or entice them by promising to transfer them to a more desirable part of the institution or even release them and on other times wouldn't say anything and just take advantage of their physical and mental inability to consent. One of the victims was a girl referred to as Mihaila, with her alongside other victims having their real names withheld. Mihaila who had lost contact with her relatives was first raped in 2002 when she was only 17 years old. According to her, Stanislav had her come to his office under the guise of discussing treatment options. Once she entered the door was locked and Stanislav threatened to lock her in block two if she didn't comply and keep silent about what transpired in the office and it was then where Stanislav violated the girl. The rape and abuse was repeated until Mihaila eventually became pregnant. The pregnancy was kept hidden from the staff and they didn't find out until she was pregnant for six and a half months. On December 4, 2004, she was brought to the maternity ward and stripped naked and placed a tablet under her tongue. She ended up giving birth to a baby boy but not long afterwards she was given an injection which rendered her unconscious. When she awoke the staff handed her a box which held the baby's dead body within it with the child. According to Mihaila having been killed via an injection noticing a needle mark on its neck. The baby was buried on the premises. Mihaila claims that Stanislav was the child's father. The abuse constantly suffered made Mihaila attempt suicide by hanging on numerous occasions but she was never able to bring herself to do it. Today she lives in a protected apartment and has her hair cut and dresses in men's clothing hoping that other predators would mistake her as a male and not attempt to assault her. 
Mihaila with her face censored for anonymity. A victim named Alina provided her own testimony stating that she was throwing out some garbage and once she returned to her room Stanislav went in after her and locked the door. Stanislav was very direct with what his intentions were as when Alina asked what he was doing. Stanislav said, Come on. Let me control you. Before forcibly undressing Alina and then undressing himself before violating the woman while she struggled. Ayla has the misfortune of being raped by another man aside from Stanislav as a staff member at the institution who was called to clean a kladovka. The staff member gave her a cup of coffee but he had slipped a pill into the coffee causing Ayla to fall unconscious. The next day the staff member coaxed Ayla into his room and began undressing threatening to beat Ayla. If she didn't go along and then proceeded to rape her. Ayla also fell victim to Stanislav and according to her testimony. She never screamed during his assault because she feared being sent to block two. Aurelia was raped by Stanislav on several different locations at his personal residence as the doctor lived on the premises. She stated that she remembered every detail of the room due to the numerous traumatic incidents she experienced in it. She was also able to identify Stanislav years later because there was a scar on his stomach from appendicitis surgery. Aurelia also became pregnant and was forcibly given an abortion without her consent with the baby. Having been killed via an injection. Irina after her violation was threatened by Stanislav with imprisonment in block 2 and forcibly. Given Eminazan. Irina's husband who was also a patient at the institute and who had been published by being sent to. Block 2 testified that those sent to Block 2 weren't released until the staff decided and often beat the residents and deprived them of food and forcibly administrated aminazin and haloperidol to them. He stated that some of the patients while under the influence of the drugs attempted suicide while in Block 2 trying to throw themselves from their windows. The two drugs they were given aminazin and haloperidol were often administered incorrectly causing the following side effects depression, nausea, low blood pressure, fatigue, drowsiness, transient sleep disturbances, grand mal seizures in epileptic patients, psychotic symptoms and hallucinations. Veronia had a boyfriend who was another patient at the institution who was permitted to leave and work in the nearby city. Whenever he did leave that was when Veronica would be abused by Stanislav being lured to his residence and given some wine which was laced with an unknown substance. She was forcibly undressed and forced onto the carpet with her back rubbed against it until it started to sing and burn. She was then raped and mocked while being forced to drink more drugged wine. Afterwards, due to this assault, it took a while before she was able to sit and lie down again as her back started to bleed. Elena was raped twice and both times she did everything demanded of her without fighting back out. Of fear since she had previously been sent to block two where she still had the physical scars from the various injections she was forced to take. Tatiana was sent to the institute at a young age after her mother died and her father became an alcoholic. Tatiana like others fell victim to Stanislav and Tatiana ended up getting pregnant and seven months into her pregnancy was given a forceful abortion with her child being buried at a cemetery on the property. Tatiana eventually escaped on her own from the facility and gave birth to another child. She is said to be recovering well. Tatiana and her child both with their faces censored. The first rape was in 1998 and the last incident occurred on January 2, 2013. Most of the victims lacked relatives or anybody to turn to and could only report their rapes to the 
staff who at best didn't believe them and at worst were actively complicit in his activities while the few complaints sent the police and prosecutor's way were ignored. Stanislav's undoing would be brought about due to one of the victims not being as helpless and alone as the others. One of the victims mentioned above Alina had a mother who she was still in contact with. After the male staff and doctors dismissed her complaint a nurse was sent to calm her down and gave her an injection to help with this but even she didn't believe her. Alina rushed to a phone to call her mother and tell her what happened and afterwards her mother called the police. The police after receiving the phone call went to the Internationale Sihonorologic and removed Alina from their care and had her undergo a psychiatric evaluation performed by a psychiatrist not associated with the institution with the psychiatrist determining that she was a reliable source. The police returned to Internationale Sihonorologic and investigated the room where Alina claimed the rape happened in and recovered various items in the discarded clothing of Stanislav and Alina. Stanislav's office and residence were thoroughly searched and recovered physical evidence which they believed pointed towards a rape having occurred. The police then questioned other female patients and examined previous complaints and uncovered 18. 19 total instances of rape accusations against Stanislav. On January 9 Stanislav resigned and on February 1 he was finally arrested. Stanislav after arrest. On February 4 Stanislav was officially charged with rape and held in jail. On February 26 he and was made to undergo a psychiatric evaluation to determine his competency and other accusers were made to be subject to an evaluation as well to determine their reliability. On February 28 criminal proceedings were initiated against Stanislav and was placed under house. Arrest on March 11 the results of the evaluation ruled him as sane and competent to stand trial. He stayed on house arrested until June 20 when he was released on his own recognizance. The trial was slow and court proceedings dragged on for nearly three years before there was a verdict and a lot happened in those three years. While Stanislav denied interviews with the press his staff and colleagues were very open to discussion stating that they were shocked by the accusations and stated that Stanislav was a good family man and denied ever receiving any accusations against him. When Stanislav resigned and was later arrested Vasile Petik took over as the director of Internationale Sihonorologic and denied having any knowledge of abortions taking place or that any patients were ever pregnant. When a journalist called him to ask about Block 2 Vasile got angry and said, Listen. What do we do? Lessons on the phone or what? Don't ask me. I'm busy driving, and I can't talk, and refused to return any more calls. The staff also complained about the constant inspections, audits and police, prosecutorial investigations making the job difficult. Another accusation would be made against the hospital staff accusing them of covering up abuse and beatings as the mother of one of the patients stated that her daughter came home from the Institute covered in bruises and with torn clothes and when she called the hospital to complain. She was dismissed with the staff explaining that she simply tripped and fell. They also allegedly attempted to intimidate some of the accusers with Mihaila being called a liar. By them. That she couldn't prove when her abortion took place and that the courts would believe the doctors. Over a. Sick woman. Vasile would later be relieved of his duties and dismissed. The new director would admit abortions took place but refused to provide any reports stating that the women consented to the procedure ruling it as patient data. At the end of January 2014, 
One of the accusers passed away after providing testimony against Stanislav with the cause of death being labeled as chronic illness. On April 29 another witness named Laura would also pass away after providing testimony against Stanislav. Laura was found dead in a bathtub at the institution. An autopsy was conducted and the coroner ruled that she suffered from an epileptic seizure and drowned in the tub with the cause of death being ruled as asphyxiation. The other accusers did not believe these deaths to be accidental or natural and that the hospital was silencing them and the prosecutors demanded and carried out an in-depth investigation into the deaths and found that nine other patients had passed away from heart failure. However nothing disproving the official cause of death could be uncovered and the deaths were ruled as a coincidence. The prosecution would regrettably lose one more witness as on May 17 Aurelia one of the accusers above would call her attorney via letter Gassatoy explaining that she had again been threatened with imprisonment in block 2 and that she couldn't take it anymore announcing her intention to escape. She did leave the institution and would stop answering any calls made to her mobile phone. Witnesses including other patients with permission to leave the facility all reported seeing Aurelia in the company of beggars in Balti. She was seen with marks on her face from a beating and a bruise under her eye. Despite this lead, the police and prosecution were unable to locate Aurelia as she never begged in the same location. And it was unknown where she slept. Veronia would also have her case dismissed as she was unable to appear in court a decision that was appealed. The prosecution and the accuser's attorneys also made attempts to remove the others from Internatului Sihoneurologics Care. Aurelia with her face censored. Three judges presided over the case and they held hearings once every six months and the trial kept getting delayed with the trial finally starting in earnest in May 2016. Stanislav represented by Angela Prokopsiak plead not guilty to all charges and accused all the accusers of lying. Angela argued that there was no physical or biological evidence of rape as none of the accusers appeared to have suffered from any acts of violence and no biological material such as semen was discovered in his home or office she also argued that the initial search of his residence and office was conducted illegally and thus anything uncovered was invalid. He accused the patients of having ulterior motives due to prior grievances with him such as one wanting revenge due to him having relationships with someone outside the institute and another trying to extort him. He also claimed that he suffered from impotence since 2010 rendering it impossible for him to have sexual relations with women. Stanislav in court with his attorney and wife. Stanislav's staff and other doctors would be called to testify and they made no effort to hide their prejudices laughing at the victims during their testimony and telling them to stop talking. And when it was their time to testify they called the accusers, stupid, and, sick, stating that they were unfit to testify due to their mental illness. One of them even stated that Stanislav did the victims a favor by showing them, attention, because they are not, Angelina Jolie, to rape, their testimony did not work wonders when it came to Stanislav's defense as on May 25th Stanislav Floria was found guilty on only three of the 16 counts of rape although sentencing was postponed on two occasions. Stanislav in court. On October 25, 2016, sentencing would finally be carried out. In spite of online petitions with many signatures and numerous Moldovan politicians expressing solidarity with the rape victims. The courts handed down a sentence that many disagreed with giving Stanislav a 13-year sentence. 
Although not what they were hoping for this wasn't what enraged and shocked Moldova it was what happened afterwards. Stanislav was given 15 days to appeal this verdict and since the judges never ordered he be taken into custody he and his wife simply walked out of the court and due to the presumption of innocence and the possibility that the court made an error in their verdict and sentencing Stanislav was allowed to remain a freeman during those 15 and if his appeal is accepted with a higher court reviewing the sentence he would be permitted to remain free for the appeal period as well An appeals court agreed to examine the case as you could expect many of the victims feared for either their safety or that Stanislav would flee and cross the border into Transnistria and evade punishment the one thing that made the outcome hurt even more was how no compensation was rewarded to the victims Stanislav himself showed no emotion during the procedures the sentencing document. Thankfully the story does not end here as Stanislav's appeal would backfire. On March 21, 2019, three years after the first court's verdict an appeals court upheld the conviction but also altered the sentence. Stanislav was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment and was ordered to be taken to prison after the verdict was announced with the three years between appeals not counting towards time served he was also convicted on all 16 counts and ordered to pay 15 of the victims 50. Oh Moldovan Leu with another being awarded 70. Oh Leu in compensation due to being underaged when Stanislav raped her. The police taking Stanislav away after the appeal court's verdict. Stanislav appealed this decision to the SCJ who on November 19, 2019, refused to hear the case. Stanislav appealed one more time to the Moldovan Supreme Court who after a brief review of the facts on August 11, 2020, refused to examine or hear the case. All three of the appeals courts issued a strong condemnation of Stanislav. His staff, the police and prosecutors for ignoring the complaints for so long and even criticized the first court stating that prejudice against those with disabilities psychical and mental played a part in their lenient sentencing. Although Internationally Sihoneurologic suffered from severe reputational damage and the staff received disciplinary action Stanislav was the only one to face any criminal charges and he is still serving his sentence to this day. Sources. Other European crimes. The disappearance of a wealthy Middle Eastern businessman. The trick eel Fontania neighborhood bombing. Ternovsky Farms. The murder of a priest and his black book. Amtrovis. Carol Novik. Kultamurit.